Alex Pereira did at UFC 295 what his arch rival Israel Adesanya couldn't, become a two-weight world champion. The former middleweight champ stopped the former light heavyweight champ Yuri Prohatska for the light heavyweight title. And now he wants Adesanya again. The bout between Prohatska and Pereira was Prohatska's opportunity to win back the belt he had to vacate. The UFC's first and only Czech champion won the title in June of 2022, when he beat Pereira's head trainer and then champion Glover Teixeira. The two were booked for a December rematch for later that year, until Prohatska suffered a serious injury to his right shoulder and had to vacate. Tashira went on to face and lose to Jamal Hill for the vacant title. But Hill then injured his Achilles and also had to vacate. Meanwhile, Pereira made his long-awaited move up to light heavyweight and took on and beat the former champ who beat Adesanya, Jan Blahovic. The win earned him his spot in the Madison Square Garden main event, the same place Pereira beat Adesanya for the middleweight title. It's immense. It's just so important. Everybody knows the history I have here and what I was able to accomplish here. And in a way, it's such a special moment. And believe me, I am really happy. I just don't smile much. But believe me, I am happy. Having never lost the title in the cage and back to full health, Prohatska was rightly offered the chance to get it back. And he was as game as ever. Oh, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back in my full power with that all the year of tough year. But believe me, tomorrow I will take the belt. Thank you. Yeah, let's go. It was an even first round with Prohatska finishing it with a takedown and some ground and pound before landing a hard flurry to start the second. Pereira countered with a flurry of his own, but he scored a knockdown and a few seconds later, it was done. I'm not the type of guy to call people out, but there's a guy that back in the day who did some interviews and said I was a guy who was just going to stay in the bar, Pereira said in the cage. I want to make this fight happen. Adesanya, come to daddy. If the Pereira versus Adesanya feud isn't the biggest feud in recent history, it's certainly the longest. Pereira beat Adesanya twice in kickboxing before facing Adesanya for Adesanya's middleweight UFC title and knocking him out. Adesanya got revenge and his first win over the Brazilian in the immediate rematch, after which Pereira moved up to light heavyweight for his next fight. A third MMA and a fifth encounter could be on the cards, except for two significant obstacles. The first is that after fighting four title fights in 14 months, the last of which was an upset loss to Sean Strickland to lose the middleweight title, Adesanya has put himself on a self-imposed hiatus. He simply doesn't seem keen on coming back anytime soon. What did he say? Come to daddy. Last time I checked, you were slapped, responded Adesanya on his own YouTube channel. You know what? I wonder if I'll ever see him on the golf course. I'm going to go golf. The second issue is the former champ, Jamal Hill. He was cage side for the bout. And as he didn't lose the belt in a fight, it's assumed he'll get the next shot at the title, just as Prohaska did. But there's also the other former champ in the picture, Jan Blachowicz. The Polish fighter lost a contentious split decision to Pereira but it cost him the spot in this championship bout. Alex Pereira, I know you're a slimy one. Calling out Izzy, wrote the Polish fighter on Twitter. Great performance and all, but shut the f up. We have unfinished business, you and I. The judges won't give you handouts next time. Pathetic. Whichever man Pereira gets next, it seems like he'll be ready for anyone. I spoke to other reporters and I don't know if Hill will be able to be ready in time or not. 
When it comes down to my revenge against Adesanya, it's the same as with this fight, you know what I mean? Everything that came with me to this fight came with me to my loss, but nothing more. It's nothing personal. And in the co-main event, Tom Espinal out Sergei Pavlovich, Sergei Pavlovich. The big Brit rendered the big Russian unconscious in the first round to take the interim heavyweight title, which wasn't too shabby for a man who took the fight on just two weeks notice. I think this will take a while to sink in, to be honest. It's uh, been an absolutely crazy two and a half weeks. I've been saying, I can tell people now, um, I basically didn't have any training camp at all. I wasn't really in the best shape. Um, I got like I got the call like three four days after I pulled my back really bad. I couldn't <laughs> barely even move or do anything. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been some. And I didn't have a visa as well. It's been some some three weeks. Let me tell you, it's been absolutely insane. With the heavyweight champion John Jones injured, the interim title fight between the two huge European men was made. While Espinal is clearly a massive man who went into the fight with a 100% finishing rate. It was Pavlovich on his six fight, six win, six first round knockout streak, who had earned the reputation of being the scariest guy in the scariest division. Even Espinal agreed. Scary guy, mate, yeah. He's uh, definitely an intimidating guy. But that being said, I uh, do my best work when I'm scared. Fear is something that I have a really good relationship with, and it gives me a superpower. So, generally speaking, the more scared I am, the better I do in the fight. So, spicy button. Thank you very much to Tom, naming me the most dangerous man in the division. But I also think that Tom is a pretty dangerous guy. He's very good at stand up and on the ground. We're not taking him lightly, we're preparing 100%, and it's going to be a real fight. For 69 seconds, it absolutely was. Pavlovich seemed to land the heavier shots early, but with two heavy right hands of his own, Espinal put the Russian down before pouring on the hammer fists for the win. Now, he wants to unify the division. Just give me the opportunity, job. Let me do it. Give me my dream fight. Why not? Politely pleaded Espinal after the win. I've just achieved my dream now. Give me my dream fight. Let me fight for my legacy now, please. Jones was scheduled to make his first defense until he suffered a shoulder injury in training that will likely have him sidelined for eight months. Usually, the interim champ would have the automatic next shot at the title. The UFC, however, seems intent on having him face his original opponent, Stipe Miocic, in a GOAT versus GOAT mega event in June of 2024. Unfortunately for Espinal, that could leave him out in the cold for over a year if he wants to face the winner. Joining the two new champs with 50K performance bonuses were Jessica Andrade, Benoit Saint-Denis, and Diego Lopez for their brutal stoppages on the main card. And fight of the night went to the three-round draw between Nazim Sadikov and Vyacheslav Borshov. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.